Welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast. In this podcast I'm going to be reviewing The Five Doctors, which is out on DVD next week. So before I begin, here's a short word from William Hartnell. One day I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. And that's how The Five Doctors begins. You see, we are presented with a small problem with The Five Doctors at the beginning, that William Hartnell died in 1975, and as this story was made in 1983, without the aid of a TARDIS, you're not going to be able to get him. So what they've done is, they've got some nice footage of William, and they've inserted it at the beginning. The Five Doctors is seen by most people as a classic, And it is, rightly so, a classic. It was a very important part of Doctor Who fandom for a very long time. Davidson's Doctor had hit its stride, and the show was just beginning to get international popularity. The show had also reached 20 years of production, which by anybody's standards is quite impressive. It's difficult to imagine now that the show is 43 years old, that more time has passed since the show was made than had since the show had begun when it was shown at all. And so the 11 year old me absolutely adored this story. When you're 11, you can't see the holes, you're willing to forgive so much more. As far as you were concerned as a small Doctor Who fan, you were getting to see a piece of history and you were seeing a piece of history. With this new DVD release, we are presented for the first time with the original broadcast version of The Five Doctors on DVD. The DVD that had been released of The Five Doctors was of the special edition. There are problems with the special edition, but of course it's also 106 minutes long, as opposed to the original broadcast version which is 90 minutes long. Weirdly enough, although it's 16 minutes longer, whenever I watched the special edition I always felt that I was seeing slightly less rather than slightly more. I have no idea why that is a sensation, but the effects the effects in 1983 always felt slightly better than the ones from the special edition. So this is the first Doctor Who DVD to be re-released. So what do we get out of this new re-release? Well, there is possibly the worst kept secret, Easter Egg. If you keep pressing audio options while watching one of the versions of the episodes, you get a commentary, a hidden commentary, by David Tennant. Uh, my name's David Tennant, and I play, or played, uh, <laughs> the 10th Doctor, who doesn't, who doesn't appear in this. And the producer and the writer of the new series, they're sitting around like proper little fanboys and fangirls, just commenting on the episode. It's a lot of fun and well worth experiencing. Again, you get the normal sort of commentaries and from people who are in it and there's Davidson, there's the director, there's a host of extras well worth experiencing and with it being a two disc set there's more room for even more extras. The breakfast time interviews with Troughton, Pertwee, Davidson, Saturday Superstore with Tegan, Turlow and the Fifth Doctor or some actors I'm not quite sure who, excerpts from Nationwide and two very very nice documentaries. The first one, presented by Colin Baker, gives you a background of not just this story, but also of the BBC's special Doctor Who event at Longleat. Paul Connell is interviewed during this, and he explains that to many Doctor Who fans, the Longleat event, which had something ridiculous amount of people turning up to it, was basically the Doctor Who Woodstock. Everyone he meets has a story about how they were meant to go, or they couldn't go, or they'd been naughty, or 
something turned up and things went horribly wrong or how they met or who they met and fanzines were created there it was it was a hotbed of creativity because so many people were doing what the English do so well which was Q. If you were at Longleat the chances are you may turn up on this documentary because there's quite a bit of footage. The second documentary is called The Ties That Bind and that was basically just made for a load of fans in the way that this story is just a celebration of Doctor Who-ness. The Ties That Bind is a celebration of all of the interconnectedness and the postmodern references and things like that that you get throughout the Five Doctors story. Things that you've heard, where you've heard them from, all well worth experiencing. But enough of the extras, what about the story itself? The Five Doctors stands up quite well, as long as you don't look at it too closely. Originally the celebration story was meant to be written by Robert Holmes and was meant to be called The Sixth Doctors. But as that fell through, Terence Dix was approached and as Terence Dix will be the first to admit, he created a shopping list of things he'd like to see in the story. This shopping list included all of the Doctors, Dalek, Cybermen, everything that made Doctor Who what it was. For some people the story does suffer from this. It's as if, and then there's this, and then there's this, and then there's this, and it moves on. But when you were 11 watching it, you didn't feel that at all. And the 11 year old is the person who was reviewing this. The person who sat down, watched the five doctors, and was just transported back to when Peter Davison was everybody's doctor. Richard Herndl's portrayal of the first doctor is seen by many as not the greatest, but we were willing to suspend our disbelief, and if you are willing to suspend your disbelief, then you will enjoy this story. The first Doctor and the fifth Doctor interaction is very good. Caroline Ford does feel slightly wasted in the role. We'd like to deal with the aftermath of what happened after the first Doctor abandoned him. Her. Some of the continuity errors are odd. Things like Patrick Troughton's Doctor seeing Jamie and Zoe, we can only assume during his time as the second Doctor, but then realising that they'd had their memories wiped, which only happens at the end of his time at the Second Doctor. This has actually given rise to what fandom like to call Season 6B, which is basically a missing, unseen season, which takes place after the Second Doctor is put on trial, but before he becomes John Pertwee. Many missing stories have been slotted into this gap, and it's more of an oddity. But let's face it, this oddity only exists because of a mistake. For a lot of fans, the story really should be called the Three and a Half Doctors, because you have Troughton, Pertwee and Davidson, the original actors, playing the part. In the role of Tom Baker, we have some footage that was left over from Sharda, because Tom had really only been out of the role a year and a half, and wanted to not be as associated. Narratively, this works, and of course Herndl just kind of turns up. If you'd like to experience this story from a fan's point of view, I suggest you visit Tachyon TV's website and download their Five Doctors commentary. You will laugh, you will chortle, and to be honest, it's just great. Go for it now. Peter Davidson's Doctor finishes this whole event by saying, You mean you're deliberately choosing to go on the run from your own people in a rackety old TARDIS? Why not? After all, that's how it all started. And that sums up this story so, so well. I'll finish today's podcast with a small excerpt taken from the Ties That Bind documentary, just as a taster, because I know you'll be wanting to buy this. And I know you'll want to see this. It's a montage of all of the Doctors, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. There will be more podcasts available this week. I'm sure you may have already missed the Torchwood one this week, and I did elect to keep this one quite separate, in order for people who wanted to experience the Five Doctors review, but not spoil any Torchwood for themselves, separate. I hope you understand that one. Next week, there will be the one year anniversary show. So until then, be seeing you. Come along, my dear. It's time we were off. He sees the threads that join the universe together and mends them when they break. I'm not a human being. I walk in eternity.
Oh, no. Have you ever thought what it's like to be wanderers in the fourth dimension? Oh, it's the TARDIS. It's my home. TARDIS. Time and relative dimension in space. And this type's not really my forte. There are some corners of the universe which have read the most terrible things. I am usually referred to as the master. Things which act against everything that we believe in. I shall kill you all now. Is that finger loaded? But first, I have more important tasks to perform. You know, just once I'd like to meet an alien menace that wasn't immune to bullets. Touch the alien sand and hear the cries of strange birds and watch them wheel in another sky. Would that satisfy you? You're a classic example of the inverse ratio between the size of the mouth and the size of the bread. Courage isn't just a matter of not being frightened, you know. It's being afraid and doing what you have to do anyway. Uh, Victoria, I think this is one of those instances where discretion is the better part of valor. Jamie has an idea. Come along. Everything will be all right. You have changed. Still find you menacing your own shadow. You may disguise your features, but you can never disguise your tent. You can't just change what I look like without consulting me. New generation. Complete new life cycle. Best of some body of mine is wearing a bit thin. That's not me at all. Genius. What's for tea? Tea. 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 You're calling the butler. I'm very partial to tea and muffins. I say, what a wonderful butler. He's so violent. Doctor, you look being childish. Well, of course I am. There's no point in being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes. Logic, my dear Zoe, merely enables one to be wrong with authority. Ah, oh, you've noticed that. I mean, anyone can talk sense. As long as that's understood, you're not going to get splendid. I'm definitely not the man I was. It all started out as a mild curiosity in the junkyard. And now it's turned out to be quite a great spirit of adventure, don't you think? have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.